What is a classic aquaponics diagram and what are the different parts that we can add to the system to improve it starting from a very small backyard aquaponic system to finish with a larger system, larger scale to produce a significant quantity of food. This is what we're going to see together in this video. So when we talk about backyard aquaponics, most of the time we are talking about grow bed, flood and drain grow bed aquaponics. And the one I have behind me, uh, the, the one you can see on my left and on my right, uh, they are both backyard aquaponics that are actually flood and drain grow bed aquaponics system. So they are just composed of two tanks. One tank is a fish tank on the bottom and on top of this fish tank we got a grow bed which is another tank where we got some media, some gravels and the plants are growing in this tank. So from a water flow perspective it's very simple. The water from the fish tank is pumped to the grow bed on top and from there the water is flushed down to the fish tank. So uh, the water is flushed in the grow bed which means that we got some water variation uh, levels in the fish tank. And if I had to say um, to basically give you, give, you, give you the pro and cons of this type of system, uh, in the pro we can say that basically the system is very uh, simple very basic and very easy to put in place. Uh, you know, you don't have too many parts, it's very affordable uh, and from a design perspective that's really the base and that's where I think everyone should start at aquaponics because you just have to put two tanks on top of each other. Also they produce uh, a significant quantity of food uh, but they require a little bit of maintenance. Uh, now the cons is that in uh, the fish tank, the water level is going up and down uh, several times per hour. And this is due to the fact that the water, some water, is pumped to the grow bed. Uh, when the water is in the grow bed, obviously it's not in the fish tank, so the fish tank water level decreases. And then when the grow bed flush, then the water goes back in the fish tank. So the water level in the fish tank goes back up again. So uh, it's not going to make a huge uh, difference in terms of water level, but it can make it vary of one quarter of the whole, the whole height of the fish tank. So um, if you want to have a fish tank that has a constant level, uh, this is not adapted. That's why we can add different parts to the system. So that's a classic backyard aquaponic system, flood and drain grow bed system. Now to this system we can add different parts. One of them is first a filter, filtration. So we can add a mechanical filter. Uh, we have the swire filter or the radial filters. Uh, they can be added to the setup. So I made some video about those filters and I got some uh, free training as well to build your own. Uh, and uh, it's uh, free of access. So when you add some mechanical filtration to your aquaponic system, you're going to decrease the quantity of organic matters that are going to be able to go to the grow bed. And if you look at it from an ecosystem point of view, you could think, okay, that's less uh, organic matter, so less food for the bacteria and therefore for the plant. But generally speaking, uh, we are limited into the quantity of fish that we can grow in an aquaponic system because we don't have enough bacteria, so that's our limit. Now, if you add a little filter, a mechanical filter, it's going to decrease the quantity of solids that are going to finish in the grow bed. And therefore, you may be able to stock a little bit more fish and to reduce also uh, the frequency of maintenance that you will have to uh, clean the grow bed, basically. You know, the grow bed needs to be cleaned every few years. So it's, which involves moving the gravels. I made some videos about it. If you add a mechanical filter and you decrease the quantity of organic matters that are going to finish in the grow bed, then you decrease the frequency of this maintenance. Then you can also add a biological filter. So a biological filter is going to allow you to basically increase the quantity of bacteria that you have in your system. 
And as you know, the bacteria are responsible for transforming the fish poo into plant's food. So when you do that, you're going to increase the capacity of your system to stock fish. Another part that you can also add into your system is a sump tank. So why would you like to add a sump tank? If you add a sump tank to the system, you're going to be able to base first uh, put the fish tank and the grow bed at different levels. So right now you see that the grow bed has to be on top of the fish tank in a classic flood and drain system. But if you have a sump tank, then you can work in another way and you can have the fish tank above the grow bed or at the same level. So you have the possibility basically to put your fish tank and your grow bed wherever you want. So it's really going to help you in the design of the system. Now, obviously, it adds another tank and also the other big advantage of uh, the sum tank is that now the water variation is going to be in the sum tank and in your fish tank, the water level is always going to stay the same. So it's a comfort for your fish. From an aesthetical point of view as well, uh, it may look a bit better. Uh, and uh, so if it's a requirement for you to have the fish tank always with the water at the same level, you may consider to have a sum tank. Then you can also cross different types of aquaponic system together and form a hybrid system. So if you already have a backyard aquaponics, which is a flood and drain grow bed aquaponic system, you can add also some NFT systems, so nutrient film technique pipes around the system, along a fence, so there are different ways to integrate uh, this system in an existing one um, and it's quite simple to do. The advantage is that you're going to be able to grow some food in both the grow bed and the NFT system. So you will be able to improve the quantity of plants that you can grow and increase your aquaponics production. Finally, you can also add a deep water culture tank in your system. So if you have enough room, you can design some uh, deep water culture tanks or we call them as well raft systems. So those tanks can be placed anywhere where you have room and you can link them to your existing system. So then you have a very large uh, productivity. Uh, later on, you can add other fish tanks to have different spaces or fish, fish of the same species at different stage uh, of growth but you can really increase the size of the system. So you start with a small system and then you can always add parts and making, making it evolve to something that is way bigger at the end. So you start from a system that is just gonna be able to produce a little bit of food for your family to a large scale system that is gonna be able to produce a really significant quantity of food. I always recommend to start aquaponics on a small scale. I think it's better because if you make some mistakes, at least you don't have a huge crop that is going to die. So um, starting with a small scale system is going to allow you to build your skills and then you can equip your system and build up uh, thanks to uh, the explanation I give you in this video and going for bigger scale system. Uh, you can also have a small scale system, keeping it as it is, and then building another bigger one aside when you, ha when you have the money and when you get the skills. And in this case, you can still have the small one to make some experimentations and the big one to produce a significant quantity of food. If you want more information about the ratio, quantity of fish you need to have, uh, size of the grow bed uh, ratio with size of the fish tank, uh, all those type of things. Uh, I give you a free training where you got all those type of information. It's in the description of the video just below, completely free. Uh, it's a six step training where you really build your skills and you get a lot of technical information to start aquaponics in the best conditions and to really understand the limits of aquaponics and the ratio that you really need to respect. So I highly recommend you to get this free training uh, again, it's in the description of the video just below or in the eye like information in the corner of the video. And uh, from there, you will have all the information required to build your own setup, but also to start aquaponics uh, on the good base and to be able to start and manage your aquaponics system in the best conditions. So once you get access to the free training, 
you will arrive to this page. And here you will have uh, a detail of different steps. And each time you got a video or some description to really allow you to build some uh, strong knowledge and to know and to learn the basics of aquaponics so to avoid any uh, mistakes. So just enter your email address and you will receive access to this training. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe. You're going to have one free video every week. And if you enjoy this video, please give it a like. I see you in the next one. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop.